Real time, Russians pound the last access points to Bakhmut, which is under siege in Ukraine. The only remaining road into and out of Bakhmut appears to have been destroyed in images that surfaced this morning. As a result, the Ukrainian military has been forced to travel on unpaved roads, which indicates that their situation is becoming more difficult. An online video that was posted by the commander of a drone unit in the Ukrainian army revealed that he had been given the go-ahead to depart from Bakhmut. The Ukrainian army hasn't been given orders to withdraw, according to a video posted by another person, who also claimed that the first video was an example of Russian disinformation in action. The Security Council must discuss additional anti-terrorism measures to protect locations under the control of law enforcement, Russian President Vladimir Putin said to his council on Friday. In the southern Bryansk region, which borders Ukraine, Putin claimed on Thursday that Russia had been subjected to a terrorist attack and vowed to annihilate the sabotage group that had opened fire on civilians. According to the PM, Ukraine is able to meet its energy needs despite Russian airstrikes. According to Prime Minister Denis Shmihal on Friday, despite repeated Russian airstrikes on Ukraine's energy infrastructure, the country is generating all the energy it needs. At a news conference, Shmihal stated that no immediate changes to the government were planned and that reforms would go on as usual. Additionally, he stated that Kyiv, which has submitted an application to join the NATO military alliance, was hoping for concrete decisions from its NATO allies. 1.41 p.m., Putin changes the law to ensure that state defense orders are carried out as intended. On Friday, Russian President Vladimir Putin signed a decree allowing the state to suspend the directors and shareholders of any businesses that don't fulfill state defense contracts while martial law is in effect. The decree would give the industry ministry the power to choose a new outside administrator to take over the management of these businesses. Putin announced in October that he would impose martial law in four regions of Ukraine that Moscow has partially seized control of and claimed as its own territory. Most nations have denounced this as being illegal. He has not implemented martial law throughout all of Russia a year into the conflict with Ukraine, but he has effectively put the economy on a war footing with defense factories operating non-stop in three shifts to supply the army. The Kremlin promises to take measures to stop incursions across the Ukrainian border at 10.55 a.m. following the day's killing of two civilians in southern Russia by Ukrainian nationalists, Moscow announced, on Friday that it would take action to prevent cross-border incursions. In the future, measures will be taken to prevent similar events, Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov assured reporters. Putin will lead a meeting of his Security Council later on Friday, according to Peskov. On Thursday, Moscow claimed that Ukrainian nationalists had crossed into the southern Russian region of Buryansk and killed two civilians, an allegation dismissed by Kyiv as a deliberate provocation. 9.27 a.m., Wagner chief claims Bakhmut is practically surrounded in Ukraine. Russian paramilitary group Wagner's commander claimed on Friday that his troops had practically encircled Bakhmut, a city in eastern Ukraine that Russia has been attempting to annex for months. The Wagner paramilitary group units have practically surrounded Bakhmut, only one road remains to leave the city, Yevgeny Prigoshin said, calling on Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky to abandon the city. Lavrov of Russia asserts that Moscow will not permit another West gas pipeline explosion at 8.43 a.m. The West will not be allowed to blow up gas pipelines again, the Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov declared on Friday, adding that Moscow would no longer rely on the West as a partner in energy. In September, explosions damaged the Nord Stream pipelines. Moscow has claimed that Western nations were to blame and has demanded an international investigation. These claims have been refuted. Yus Burrell notes a small improvement in U.S.-Russian talks at 7.47 p.m. Josep Burrell, the head of EU foreign policy, claimed on Friday that after a G20 summit that featured unusual U.S.-Russia talks, he saw a small improvement in relations with Moscow. Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov and Secretary of State Antony Blinken had a brief meeting on Thursday in New Delhi as the top U.S. diplomat pressed Moscow on its invasion of Ukraine. Burrell pointed out that, 
unlike at the previous G20 foreign ministers meeting in Bali last year, when he stormed out, Lavrov stayed in the room when Western countries criticized Russia. At the White House at 7.30 a.m., Biden and Schultz will discuss the Ukraine conflict. As both allies become more vocal about their worries that China may leave the sidelines and provide weapons to Russia for its invasion of Ukraine, German Chancellor Olaf Scholz is visiting the White House on Friday for a private meeting with President Joe Biden. According to Kethevain Gorgistani, a correspondent for France 24, the meeting is also an opportunity for the two leaders to compare notes on their recent encounters with their respective counterparts from Ukraine, Volodymyr Zelensky. At 6 in the morning, the Quad ministers condemn Russian nuclear war threats. In a statement released following a meeting on Friday, the foreign ministers of the so-called Quad group criticized Russia's threat to use nuclear weapons in the Ukraine war as unacceptable. In a thinly veiled allusion to China, the ministers also stated that they were opposed to any unilateral actions that would heighten tensions in the South China Sea and that they were worried about the militarization of disputed areas. India, Australia, Japan, and the United States make up the quadrilateral group. 1.17 a.m., on Friday, the U.S. will announce new ammunition assistance to Ukraine. According to the White House, the United States will announce new aid to the war-torn Ukraine on Friday, primarily in the form of ammunition to assist it in fending off Russian invasion forces. John Kirby, a spokesman for the National Security Council, said on Thursday that the U.S. will just unilaterally have another round of assistance for Ukraine on Friday. He continued, it will mostly be ammunition and munitions that the Ukrainians will need for the systems that they already have, especially the HIMARS precision rocket launchers. The announcement will take place when German Chancellor Olaf Sc is at the White House.